Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst for Storage Switzerland. Data centers today are being faced with all kinds of challenges in delivering quality of service to the applications that are counting on their infrastructures. But quality of service has its own unique problems. Complexity, they're static, they're not uh, able to evolve, and they're really not aware of what else is going on in the environment. So joining me in the conversation about that is Shai Maskett. He is the Director of Technical Marketing with Caminaria. Shai, thanks for joining us. Thank you, George. Great to be here. So let's back up first and kind of talk about these different layers that, that we deal with in the data center. So if we look at the general problem that most, if not all, IT enterprise environments have, is that they're not aware of one another. Mm -hmm. So you have your compute, your network, and your storage. Okay, Each one, great products in the market, all of them with great uh, insight of what they're doing, collecting logs and data points, but there's no transfer of information. They're not aware of one another. Okay. Okay. So let's start and look at what Caminaria is doing uh, differently. Let's start with the storage, being a storage uh, vendor, the K2 All Flash Array, our product, periodically collects millions of data points across our entire install base, across geographies that span different industry and verticals. Okay, so we know all about the workload, the block size, the fabric configurations, etc. So we know all of that. Let's look at the compute. Okay, so the compute knows if it's a database running there, if it's a hypervisor for virtualized environments, or containers, or even higher up the stack, CRM environment or ERP, etc. Okay. So what we're trying to do at Caminario is to take that insight from the storage and compute. And what we do, we send from the compute and from the storage and also from the network, but let's focus on the compute and storage for now. And we send those data points to a cloud-based analytics platform that okay. utilizes Elasticsearch, utilizes uh, big data analytics to create what we came up with, prescriptive analytics. Okay, what does that mean? Those are insightful recommendations okay, for our customers to act, to do things that will increase their productivity of their environment. Just a few examples, we can talk about workload placement, capacity planning, and one of the reason why we're here today is to talk about QoS. Okay? Yeah. Uh, this ability of cloud-based analytics will allow us to release a new breed of quality of service functionalities that will eliminate those problems. Okay, so let's talk about how what you guys are doing here, leveraging the cloud and Elasticsearch and stuff, how is that going to eliminate complexity? Give me right, that. so why is it complex? It's complex because you have all those dials and knobs okay, okay. that you need to configure. So what we do, we created an abstraction layer that really simplified the issue. Only three simplified policies okay, of gold, silver, and bronze to uh, manage your quality of service. You still have your dials and knobs, but those simplified policies really make it easier for your standard administrator. Okay. okay? So complexity is gone. gone. All right, so that takes care of complexity. So let's talk about the, uh, the problem of being static, right? The, the inability to change to the environment. We use our RESTful a API, which okay. allows us a very broad integration with all the environments, be it network or compute, different hypervisors, different management suites. Really, there's no limitation to uh, what we can achieve. So that's got to appeal to both uh, service providers as well as right. large enterprises, right? right? Right, So static, gone. Gone. All right, now the big one, it, I caught your point earlier, right? All of these things are collecting thousands of data points, but to your point, they don't really, I always laugh when I hear about storage QoS and there's these other big things in the middle that right. really can cause a problem. So how do we get the, those all talking together? Okay, so, so we talked about the storage, we know the block size, we know the reads, the writes, the latency, IOPS, et cetera. But from the compute, and let's take for an example, a relational database such as Oracle. Okay. Okay. Um, the Oracle knows uh, if it's a redo log, okay, if it's running all TP workload, if it's running all app workload, and we can take those data points from the compute and the storage, and we know now how to manipulate or to give priorities uh, to those specific environments using priorities for read, write, large block size, small block size. Okay. okay? Let's take for an example uh, a company that its mission critical um, workload is OLTP. Okay. Okay. In the background, they're also running some analytics, some all up workload, but that's you know their side job. But they're, the key thing is the this. key thing is OLTP, okay. and they really want to be able to utilize our storage platform the best way possible. Okay. So in that case, what we'll do, we'll give priority to small block sizes. 
Okay, if it's most, mostly writes, we'll give priority to writes. Okay. And that way, the OLTP workload is giving better performance and the OLAP workload is not suffering at all. So what you're doing is you're picking this up. So you're, this is all going here. You're doing the an analysis and you're realizing that this particular workload, at least at this present moment in time, is, is such that it needs higher write performance or higher read deployments, depending on the, the need. Yep. And then you're communicating that back down to the storage system. Yeah, and that's great, right? For, for the first week and then the second week, that's great. But what happens in the end of the month? Right. Suddenly that business wants to create reports to run maybe some billing. Suddenly the OLTP priority is going down. And now right. the OLAP, we want it to be the most, uh, to enjoy most of the resources of the array. Okay. okay. Yeah, and that's probably like a really high need for a very short period of time. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So we want dynamic, right? Right. So just for that weekend of the end of the month, okay, we want to give priority to large block size and mostly reads. Right. And to give the all up to, to finish in the short window that it has to complete sure. to finish uh, quicker. Okay. Okay. So we change, dynamically change, we give a recommendation to dynamically change uh, the priorities, okay, of, um, of the quality of service. And that allows the business to be more productive. So I, I have one question though. This is an all flash array. Right. Why does this matter? Why do I need to worry about quality of service? I thought all flash arrays were supposed to not have any, I wouldn't need that. Why do I need to optimize here? Okay, because the, the all flash array, uh, it's a general purpose array. It's meant to serve thousands of customers, okay, okay. no matter what their workload is, right? Okay. But each customer, if they can get more from the generic configuration, why not? Why not help the customer gotcha. to even more increase productivity? So this tunes it just a little bit so you can get that exactly. extra oomph out of it. Exactly. Right? And that probably we, allows you to get your jobs done quicker on the weekend yeah. and all that kind yeah. of stuff. We're aware of the compute layer right now. Okay. okay. Gotcha. If we're not, you know, we're just it's generic, and we'll just, you know, uh, serve whoever's coming in first. So that takes care of that whole awareness thing, this cloud, and being able to intermix and, and, and adjust. So I think we took care of not aware as well, right? Correct. So we're done with that, and I think to summarize, we can say that you know, Cominari is set to enable its customers uh, to scale their business easily and cost efficiently. And this uh, data aware quality of service is just one example of how we can do that. Great. Well, thanks for joining us, Toshe. Thank you, George. So there you have it. Getting maximum value out of that all flash array is totally reliant on being able to understand what the workloads are and being able to interact between the different layers within the data center. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst with Storage Switzerland.